Hi, ever wonder what it's like to work another profession or live in the underworld? Listen to Unsuspecting Riders give a 10 to 15 minute personal masterclass as I spontaneously interview them as they enter my taxi. I'm your host, Simon Rushton, and this is Taxi Chronicles. Morning, morning, morning. Yes, we're back with another rider, another episode. Today we have a guy all the way from the Isle of Man. He's, I'm just taking him to join the military, so you know I like him already with my background. And he's telling me what it's like on the Isle of Man with the TT motorbike racing. So if you don't know what the TT motorbike racing is about, this guy's going to tell us all about it. And you can look it up on YouTube and uh, social media. So nice to have you here today. Oh, nice to nice meet you. So tell us, what is it about the TT or the Iron Man race that's so special? It's the fastest, longest, and most dangerous race in the world. It's the it's the fastest race in the world. It's okay. like if you live in a place in the Iron Man called Kurt Michael, and the racing's on, and you're in your house during the race, you can't get out of your house because the bikes are going straight past your front door. It's right. the, the energy you get just from watching it is amazing. It's okay, that's great. So you were telling us about how how many bikes are involved? Uh, you know? it depends every year, but up to about seventy bikes take part. Really? And then you got the sidecars as well. They they all start off together. Or no, 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 one by one. There's a uh, ten seconds in between them. So, that 10 seconds doesn't sound long, but it, it's a big deal. So, the, the whole point of TT is you're racing against the clock, nobody else. But if you're, say, so the first, during practice week, you have four practices and three qualifying sessions in there. And if you qualify, the first 10, they're usually the top riders, the top, the number one to 10. They all start one to 10. After that, you could be number 56, but qualifying starting at 23. So it's all about how fast you can go around the course, and each year people get faster and faster and faster. And I think the fastest, I think the fastest anyone's been round at an average speed is 139, 140 miles an hour average speed, which is insane to be honest. That's, um, that's on a bend like what's the degree of a bend? Uh, you've got hairpins. You've got people. You got there's a bit right at the beginning. There's a hill called Bray Hill and it's really steep and the bikes get down there about 201 miles an hour on a super bike okay. and then there's people at the bottom of the hill there was a crash there a couple of years ago actually what kind of bikes are we looking at we're we looking at the hayabusa and those kind of bikes well, or just the... you're looking at like state-of-the-art race bikes like uh honda pagets they have a team there you have a suzuki team there um all sorts and how long do they race for uh there's so there's five Wait, hold on. Two super, there's two superbike races, one at the beginning of the week, and one at the end of the week, which is the the blue ribbon, which is the senior. Everyone wants that one. Then you've got uh, two super sport races, which are 600 cc bikes, and then you've got a super stock race, which is a thousand cc, like a super bike, but it's a little bit lighter. It's a road bike converted into a super bike, super bike, pretty much. But you can ride your super stock bike in the super bike race if you want, because it's the same cc engine. Do you have to have a, a big team behind you, like no. a sponsor, or you can, can be, you just be a guy? So you can be a factory bike, which is the big teams, yeah. or you can be a privateer, which is you fund your own you fund your own way there, you fund your own bike. But you have to be there to get to get to the TT. You have to get a certain amount of signatures from all the races around the world and around mostly Northern Ireland and England. To show that you're good just, at what you do. Yeah. See, and you have to do them in certain times, and you have to do you have to get a certain time during practice week to be able to compete in race week. So signatures come from other races. Yes. Races or races? Like races, as in like track, different tracks. Tra okay, so they seen you and they know you up to the standard. Yeah. Okay, so I thought you meant other riders, like races. No, no, no. You have to get from different uh, oh, yeah. tracks. Okay. All right, that's interesting. Okay, so you were telling us. I mentioned earlier. I heard at least one person dies every year. Uh. I mean, I think there was one year there was no riders died at all. I mean, people do crash and they do get injured. Yeah. And it's 
I mean, it's more spectators, to be honest. When, when the racing's not on, as, uh, the first Sunday after... So, it starts... Practice usually starts on a mon Monday, Monday night. It's usually last week of June, first week of July it starts. Sometime around there. And it starts on a Monday, and then the Sunday after that Monday, the first Sunday, that's Mad Sunday. So there's no racing on Sundays unless there's cancellations for weather and stuff. Because it could be raining in Ramsey at the north part of the island, but it could be really dry in Douglas. So the whole island needs to be decent. Um, and they... Uh, on Mad Sunday, it's mobbed. You've got carnivals going on in Peel. There's the streets are packed. The track is people just doing laps and laps and laps. It's mental. The Isle of Man, I think one year we had something like 200,000 people come over. That's a lot of people. I mean, the Isle of Man's only got a population of 85,000 ish. Oh, is it? Around there, so. That's, that's more than I expected, though. Quite, quite yeah. Just to confirm, the Isle of Man, is that where the David Icke is from? The island? Or is that the Isle of Wight? Possibly the Isle of Wight. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I'm trying to think. You do would... you know, do you follow cycling? No. Do you know, have you ever heard of Mark Cavendish? No. He was the fastest cycling sprinter in the world for like many years. Okay. Does the Tour de France. He's in the Isle of Man. Uh, Peter Koenig was European champion. Um, he's oh. in the Isle of Man. It's like, because we live, we live round hills and mountains, so yeah. cyclists are... So you've got a lot of fit, fit all, all over there. Yeah. So, um, tell us that story you were telling us. You used to be a marshal. Yeah, I marshaled for one or two years, and it's... it's You get closest to the action, but it's, if something happens, you've got to be ready, and you've got to tell people to stop. You get, you're constantly telling spectators to get off the wall or keep their hands in. Well, they, they, do they listen? Mm, they listen for about a minute and then they do it again when you're not looking and then you tell them again and then it gets to the point where we have a right to like detain them until the police turn up but I've never seen that happen so okay yeah I suppose they're a risk to the driver as much as to themselves oh yeah 100% yeah. so you were telling that story about when the woman crossed the road yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she crossed the road but she got into the middle of the road and then she ran back so I ran, ran up to go and tell her and then I think she, I think the police had to come and arrest her. Actually, I'm not too sure. Why did she go in the middle of the road? Because she well, because basically when the roads are closed, usually the racing finishes. If the racing's on, if there's only one race on, like say, so you have race race week. You have the Saturday, then you have then you have the Monday, which is Superbike Race One, and I think that's it. And then Tuesday there's no racing. Wednesday you have Super Sport Race One, and um, first sidecar race, which is two people on a three wheeler bike, that's amazing to watch. Um, and then, and you have super stock race on the Wednesday, and then, and, and the electric bikes, god, and then, yeah, that's the most packed day usually. And then on the Friday, you have the sidecar race two and the senior TT. Oh, so the sidecar the, is like those German motorbikes in the war where they have the side. Yeah, but it's, they're very close to the ground, and the passenger, when they're going around the corner, say going around the left hand corner, their bum is inches from the floor. And they're going 120 mile an hour. Around. It's. How they have the balls to do that, I don't know. Like, <laughs> well, it's not even just the balls, it's the faith in your driver. Oh, yeah. Think about it. It's, I mean, the sound of them coming from, because if there's no wind or anything, and it's really, really good weather, you can hear them coming from a good mile away, and it's just a squeal of, oh, it's amazing. But, yeah, anyway, so she uh, ran into the road, because the radio, we have uh, 3FM, which is a, like the Manx, or Manx Radio, TT, and Energy, three radio stations on our map. They all put up on the social media pages or say oh the roads are now open when they're not why do they do that because the, that's the, when the, ta the time that the racing's meant to finish sometimes it goes over but they don't know that they just say right the roads should be open now so when you get the odd person that tries to but the barriers will still be up or people just push them aside thinking the roads are still open so okay so the woman didn't get run over then no I didn't know because the bikes weren't even in the last sector yet. That's where I used to marshal. And the overall race is it for a week? Uh, yeah, well, two weeks. It's two, two weeks. weeks of the year, and then that's in like 
May, June, July time. I don't really know. But it hasn't. It wasn't on last year because of uh, the coronavirus. And it's been cancelled again this year because of the coronavirus. So it should be on next year. Okay. So it's the the last time it was cancelled for that long was during the Second World War. And as it didn't get, it's only been cancelled during the Second World War. Um, in the early 2000s, I think, due to mad cow disease because of all the motorbike leathers. And now it's been, it started in 1907. And it's been going ever since. How, how long? Um, right, so you said it started in 1907? Yeah, over 100 and, 114 years. Okay. So, moving on, what made you want to join the military? Uh, just wanted to do it since I was a kid, since I was younger. It's what I was wanted to do. My stepdad was in the military, my stepbrother was in the military. My cousin's been in the military. So you're going to be a lifer? Don't know what that is. A lifer? Sorry. Somebody does that full 22 years? Uh, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Okay. And you're going to go for the officer training? Um, well, I'm starting off as a private, so I'll probably just work my way up the ranks that way. As a captain? Maybe, just to see how far I get. Yeah. Depends. Alright, okay. That's good. And the last question we ask is, what's the impact you want to have on the world? Oh, that's a good question, though. Um, I want to... I want to have a very... Um, uh, it's hard to say, really, because it, it, I don't know what's going to happen in the next 5, 10, 15 years. We go to war with someone, yeah. you know, or... I mean, my opinion on... You know terrorism and stuff like that is it's never gonna it's never gonna go yeah. because it's all homegrown if you, if you get me like you know you get you know the uh the leave big uh terrorists back in when uh, a couple, couple, quite a few years ago when that was seven eight years ago they were Brit british citizens do you know what i mean mm. they were f from britain mm -hmm. which it do, it, you know what I mean? It, yeah. it does my, my head in that. Cause but would you say terrorism is born from bad foreign policy? <sighs> do you see what I mean? If you listen to the citizens, you should be able to find some middle ground with yeah. people. I but mean... Where you don't, because of pride or whatever, do you see what I mean? Yeah. It's easy to dismiss things as just terrorism. But if you really look at it, it's like, I always say, America wouldn't have half the problems they have today yeah. if they had better foreign policy. Oh, well, that, that, instead I'm... of the attitude, America first. Yeah. We want to help you the same way we want to help us. Yeah. We both walk away happy. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. So it's the same kind of thing when you make laws. Yeah. Regarding religion, culture, and all. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean. One thing that real really boils my blood, as well, is when people see a Muslim, just any Muslim person, and think he's a bomber, he's a terrorist. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, Muslims are some of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Mm -hmm. It's just a very small percentage of them, like ISIS and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think you know what? We're above everybody else. Let's go and blow yeah. some stuff up. But but, then, would you say they're like? The equivalent to some of our fanatical Christians. Mm. Do you see what I mean? If you do get, you, do, you may not think about it, but you do get the fanatical yeah, Christian. I guess. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying, every, you know, everybody, everybody has its asshole. In the same yeah. respect, that every every family has that bad uncle, or that you know that slow person. Or blah, blah, blah. You've got every group of people has its person who's a who believes in things to the extreme. Yeah. To upset everybody, if you see what I mean. Yeah. But, but just food for thought. Interested in seeing your dynamics. Yeah. <laughs> but thanks a lot for the interview. No problem. And we wish you well in your military career to come. We hope you liked that interview. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to get the latest daily episode. 
Ever considered investing in a continent with the fastest growing economy and population on Earth? The same continent that holds 30% of the world's known natural resources? Then listen to our sister podcast, Africa Investor Stories, where you will hear real investors with real stories from around the world share their experience of investing in Africa. We post Monday and Thursday at 10am.